The unprecedented level of security breaches witnessed in recent times across the country is really getting worrisome and propelling the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces to put the service chiefs and security forces on their toes. To tackle insurgency and banditry in the country, the federal government is proposing a ban on use of commercial motorcycles nationwide to cut the logistics for terrorist activities across the country. During last week's National Security Council meeting, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malini, pointed out that the move is targeted at impending the logistics used by terrorists and bandits and their financiers to move around the country. I believe the component or perhaps the number of people that could be using the motorcycle in Nigerian state may not be up to 20% of the Nigerian population. So if the 20% of the Nigerian population is called upon to now make certain sacrifices for the purpose of addressing a challenge, a security challenge that is all pervading, affecting over 200 million Nigerians. That sacrifice, to my mind, is indeed a sacrifice worthy of being uh, considered. The government is also looking at the possibility of suspending mining activities for the time being, as it has been identified as a source of funding for terrorists. These measures are yet towards addressing the precarious security situation in the country. It can be recalled, security experts have called for tracking of the sources of funding of terrorism and the establishment of special terrorism prosecution courts in the country. What specific immediate and long-term solutions are required to tackling insecurity in the country? Will the government provide alternatives to question the effect of the proposed ban on the use of motorcycles? Just on Good Morning Nigeria, we'll be looking at the new security measures being proposed by the government. Thank you very much, Natala, for that bad roundup with us in the studios to discuss issues around this. Let's welcome uh, one of our regular guests, Dr. Kabir Adamu, a security risk management expert. Uh, it's a familiar uh, face, of course, on Good Morning Nigeria. Dr. Kabir, like to have you this morning. The pleasure is mine. Good morning. Okay. Also here with us in the studios is Alhaji Usman Buba Goza, who is president uh, National uh, Commercial Motorcycle and Tricycle Owners and Riders Association of Nigeria. Alhaji Usman, we're glad to have you this morning. Good morning, my love, sir. Okay. Thank you. Sir. And uh, uh, from Jos, we have uh, Alhaji Usman. Uh, sorry. We have uh, Sani Shehu. Uh, Sani Shehu is the former president, Miners Association of Nigeria. He is currently the president, Nigeria Chamber of Mines, and the chairman, Edwards Federation of Chamber of Mines. Uh, thank you indeed for joining us uh, from the plateau this morning. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, and. Uh, well, well, we still have a guest uh, from, from Joss, actually, you know, and uh, that's uh, uh, my error. Uh, forgive me for that. Uh, let's bring in a guest from Joss, uh, Brigadier General John Temlong, uh, first commander of a multinational joint tax force and former president of the Alumni Association of National Defense College and security consultant. Uh, we thank you for being here this morning with us. Thank you very much, Key, and good morning, Nigeria. All right, uh, Sani Shehu, once more, may I welcome you? You are in Abuja studio. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, I mean, it's, it's a Monday morning, and uh, we're happy to uh, kick off uh, the week by discussing a uh, security uh, issue. We're all familiar with the regular fare in terms of reports uh, about incidents of insecurity in different parts of, of, of the country. Before we bring in the miners and then the uh, president of the uh, Okada and Tricycle Owners and the Riders Association, which are some of the measures the government is now considering uh, to uh, tackle insecurity. Can we just seek to understand what, what is happening? Uh, in the past, we would say that ahead of elections, there is usually uh, political tension uh, and so on and so forth, but this one just appears to be uh, incidents of, of terror uh, in vast parts of, 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 of the country. And, and the sense uh, of the audacity that uh, 
the uh, you know the kidnappers or bandits are issuing uh, is frightening. Let's begin with two of our regular guests, General Tom Long, of course. It's a regular guest on Good Morning Nigeria, and then uh, Dr. Kabir Adamu here with us in the studios. Kabir. Thank you, um, on, um, Honorable. Um, let me start by mentioning that uh, just last week, we, in, I run a consultancy and we released our June um, report where we analyzed developments in the month of June. Then, of course, June um, represents the end of the second quarter 2022. It also represents a half year. So the analysis included second quarter and third quarter. And what it showed us was quite um, alarming. There are non-state actors um, operating in all the six geopolitical regions of the country that are challenging the supremacy of the state on the use of force. That's in summary what is happening in the country. If you pick the northeast, the non-state actors are allied to terrorist groups. Some of them local, some of them international. I can mention to the Islamic State in West Africa province that is allied to the Islamic State, uh, the global franchise, and then the Jamaat al ahli al Dawati wal Jihad that is allied to Al Qaeda, uh, be it Al Qaeda in the Maghreb or Al Qaeda as a global franchise, and then all the other six geopolitical regions. That's where you find non-state actors. The Northwest uh, gunmen that we classify as ban bandits that unfortunately. Um, as we showed in our report, are uh, also establishing partnership with these terrorist groups that are both local and in international. Now, there are several factors that are allowing this to happen. Uh, climate change is one of them. The weak the criminal justice system that is failing to arrest and punish offenders, proliferation of small arms and light um, weapons that allow these non-state actors to actually challenge the supremacy of, um, and then the inability of our peace, uh, you know, resolution um, systems at the local level to address gr grievances. So in the Northwest, as an example, it's essentially a conflict between two communities, Hausa and Fulanis, that have developed to reach the extent that we are at, at the moment. Drug addiction is, a, is, is another one of them. And then, of course, poverty and um, uh, unemployment is another one of them. So uh, what we also discovered is despite the effort by both the federal and state government, and frankly, they, they are doing a lot. Uh, if you look at the Northwest as an example, uh, there has been an, an, an increase in the level of military formations in, in the Northwest. Uh, there is um, a new Air Force base in Kasina. Then in Dampara State, it has been upgraded and things like that. But what has been missing is a coordinated and cohesive action by both the federal and the state go government. So you see Zamfara State doing a different approach, Katina doing another one, um, K Niger, uh, name them, all doing something different. And that absence of coordinated or cohesive ac action by both the federal and state government has now allowed these non-state actors the ability to move around freely. And I think this is central to the issue of insecurity in the country, where you have um, ad an adversary that ha we've been unable to contain and put to a particular place that we can now go and deal with. Um, in your newspaper review, you talked about the situation of the uh, abducted uh, train uh, pa passengers. We know where they are. Uh, that's not in dispute. Uh, and I, I, even if I say it in public, I don't think I'll, I'll be, you know, uh, offending anyone. We know where they are. But unfortunately, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, there's two, two state governments um, that have, I would say, um, control over the territory where this these persons are, have not seen them working together. Neither have I seen a federal um, coordinated effort that will bring these two states together to contain these elements and then use uh, both intelligence as well as ta tactical capabilities to now either um, choke them or to extract our citizens that are in their hands. So in a nutshell, this is what is happening in the country at the moment. The, my closing point would be the resilience of the local population that is expected in any situation of terrorism or warfare, it's also missing, unfortunately. When the video was released, um, I think it was released Saturday evening, and we woke up to it on, on Sunday morning, the majority of the comments I saw were condemnation directed towards the government effort. That shouldn't be in a war or uh, a terrorist situation. We should have developed the resilience of our local population to understand what the terrorists tried to do. And unfortunately, it seems they've achieved their, their objective.
Okay, thank you indeed. You mentioned states a lot, you know, in your analysis. And I was just wondering, a state government that doesn't have any control of the police or the army, or what are they going to do? I recall that in the past, some governors even, uh, you know, decided to meet the hoodlums themselves, you know, to negotiate by themselves. But they don't have power, you know, to use the army or all the police to do that. So I wonder what the state will be, in, even though the people are in their, in their, in their, in their, in their, in their jurisdiction. They may not have the world to do that. That's just part of it. Let me quickly just yeah. re respond to that quickly. Um, state, some state governments have provided models that have worked perfectly. Lagos is an example. Lagos has a security trust fund that is managed like a company. And so that's an option. Another option is also to engage the local populace. This forest that we're talking about belongs to the states actually, not to the federal government. Except if it's a reserve, then it's the federal government. So I, I don't buy that argument that states don't have um, a lot to do. They, they have a lot to do. Yes, there's a constitutional lacuna that puts security within the exclusive list. It is a constitutional lacuna, but states have certain things they, they can do. That's my point. Most of these governors belong to one political party and it's the ruling political party. Yes, uh, and some of them who to, uh, took action in terms of of negotiating by themselves, they never worked. Well, that, that, that's the absence of the framework. Okay, I okay. Was okay. okay. let me bring in Brigadier General John Temlong here uh, because he's the pro more of a professional. Uh, people think that, of course, the current situation in Nigeria is that uh, people are not safe anywhere around the country. And of course, the irony of it all is that uh, the armed forces have been, uh, you know, drafted in different parts of the, of the country and the cities. In fact, in all the regions of the country, you know, yet these hoodlums, you know, seem to always have their way very successfully anytime there's the there's strike. Um, what should be? What is the situation? How best could we be handled? professionally without of course uh, 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 carpet bombing the bush you know as the, uh, the presidency has said that look we just can't do that now uh, because the victims uh, those who are victims will become double victims you know if uh, the military will move in uh, kinetically so what should be the approach if you like you know because what we are doing this morning is to devise new measures you know to approach the insecurity situation in the country Well, thank you very much, Kieran. Uh, I think uh, when we say we want to devise new measures, uh, I don't think there are new measures per se. It's to actually do what is supposed to be done and should be done correctly. Uh, and that way we'll be able to, to handle the situation. Uh, it's not rocket science. I've said it here over and over. Uh, what, what you need to do is that there is the soft power component. The citizens are involved, the state governments and the local governments. And then there's the hard power component which the federal government brings to bear on the situation. Now, there is a difference between information and intelligence. Yes, Dr. Kabiru tells us that we know where those people are. That's an information. If you want to process that into an intelligence, is to tell us their numbers tell us the weapons they carry, where they are, what their habits are, and how they operate in those areas, their exact location. Do they use the humans as shield? Do they leave them one way or the other and move out to some other places? Uh, what weapon systems do they use? Uh, and, and so on and so forth. Those ones are intelligence and then they are actionable intelligence because you know the numbers and you know the force you can use to go and raid that area excuse me, and extricate your people. So it's, it's all over the country too. Uh, unfortunately, there are so many basic fundamentals. Those are the things that build the block to national security. The basic fundamentals are, look, who is a Nigerian? How do you identify a Nigerian? You need an ID card. The NIMSI uh, will tell you that they are working on how many Nigerians in other states have they been able to give ID cards to. What is the registration rate of birth and death that they do? Why is it so difficult to issue people ID cards and it's so easy for INEC to be able to register you and give you a voter's card within a year, within six months, within three months? What is so special about our national ID card that you people go there and they don't get it? Sometimes they give you the ID card, your identification uh, NIN is different from the one on the card itself. What is so difficult? 
I think the federal government must ramp up these things. And if the people cannot perform, suck them. Honestly, we shouldn't be playing uh, with these sort of things. The second aspect is that the, city, the population itself, to build the national resilience, it has, it has to be done. People just don't become resilient on their own. It has to be built. We have a, a national security conference in February this year at the National Defense College, the Alumni Association, on national resilience. You must build it. What are the roles of the citizens and what's the role of government? The local governments are absent. The state governments are not just there. Everybody is in Abuja politicking. People are dying on the streets. Now, recently, just about a week or two ago, it is Operation Safe Heaven here in Jos that trained vigilante in intelligence, how to gather intelligence, and these are the sort of measures you need. And this should have not been spearheaded by Operation Safe Heaven. It should have been an endeavor by the local governments and states. And you know, Operation Safe Heaven, yes, they are there. They are mostly now on the kinetic, they are deployed. You have so many resources outside there. There are many retired police, civil defense, DSS, and military personnel all over the local government areas that can be engaged in training citizens national resilience. How do you gain intelligence? What are actionable intelligence? What are the things that the military will need, the security agencies will need? And how do you report them? What is the process of pushing them forward and the rest? It's not enough to tell people that you saw so suspect people moving from point A to B. What, is their, what, what are their numbers? What strength are they in? What are they carrying? What are they doing? You know, people say that in the bush, they come to the cities or to the rural areas and to the parks, they buy food, they carry them either cooked food or raw, and take them back to go and kill. Nobody talks it. A very interesting one happened, and it's quite commendable in Lantan recently. One, the, uh, they came in there and they uh, stayed in one of the local hotels. And what happened? They came to search for a service of somebody. I don't want to disclose. But that person was suspicious and reported. And that led to the arrest. The arrest with weapons, bomb-making materials, machine guns. That is what citizens are supposed to be doing. I mean, when somebody leaves uh, Sokoto Casino, or Niger, or Mali, and gets to the hinterland as far as Lantan, I mean, you should be able to know those people. They have accents, they have uh, different set of colors, and, and different modes of doing things. But the citizens look at them as normal. So, you know, you have to galvanize and, and, and bring up the citizens to this. Coupled with that, look, our security agencies, for goodness sake, you must be able to win the trust of the citizens. What are the road safety and VIOs deploying as early as 6 o'clock in the morning collecting money from citizens, from passengers, from motorcycle riders? You are creating so much stress on them that they lack trust. You know, they will not even help you. Policemen are all over all the roads. I traveled from Lantern to Joss yesterday. And along the road, you see people just collecting. In fact, the drivers know they just carry money and put it by the side. By the time they get, they hand it over. Whether they are carrying contraband or not, they pass, 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 pass. For goodness sake, the police high command, the road safety corps high command, even the military high command must put their eyes down on those boys that they put who are supposed to be providing early warning and even doing detection at all those checkpoints and the rest to do their work. You know, the citizens will, will, will naturally be resentful because you are extorting them. Things are very hard for everybody. If they are not providing for them, then it's too bad. But I'm sure they are providing for them. They are paying them their salaries. They are taking care of them. And so it's now not meant for supervision. Get your officers go down those areas to make sure and bring it to their knowledge that a lot of these things, these people pass through all these checkpoints to reach Lantan. And then the issue of motorcycles. Yes, those are the easiest means of communication for the terrorists and bandits. And while they pass through the motorcycles, military vehicles cannot pass through. So what you need is either helicopters or you need drones that you can override them and do this. But the important thing is that those motorcycles are not even registered. 
because you have a very low, weak criminal, uh, uh, criminal law system, a very weak enforcement system. I don't know what the VIOs and uh, air road safety and the rest are doing on the road, civil defense and the rest. No motorcycle, in fact, you see motorcycles, even vehicles. They move about without being registered. In any case, the people who are registering them do not care whether you, uh, you, you go there with your name. You don't have an ID card. If I go there and say I'm Jafaru, they will register me as Jafaru, not John Temlong. As Jafaru, Isa, you register me because I don't have the means of identification. So how do you get to know who owns these motorcycles? How do you get to know those who own these vehicles that they carry? I mean, we need to strengthen. These are the basic things that we need because they are using these things. They are with us. They are not using aircraft. They are not using helicopters. They are using vehicles. They are using motorcycles. They are using tricycles. They go to motor parks that we go. And in fact, if you go to even in Abuja there, go and see the sort of motor parks that we have. I mean, these are national security infrastructure. You have in Yanya, you have in uh, Taco, you have in all one not. Do we have any means of monitoring those people? Do we have cameras in those areas? People come into those motor parks, drive vehicles. And the worst thing is that till today, if you go to most of the cities up here in the world, you don't see taxis. People have turned private vehicles into what they call one tons. They call them taxis and the rest. For goodness sake, what are the public means of transportation that people know about? How do they move? How do you transport? And so terrorists themselves, kidnappers go to motor parks or go to the road, carry people from the road and move them straight to the den. Because there are, I think the government, the private and the, and, and, and the public have to come together and agree. Let's build a public transportation system that will be able to be monitored and provide as part of the national security infrastructure. Because if without doing this, even if you say 20% of the people, if you go to some areas in Lantang, in Wase, in Kanam, and all one, you cannot use vehicles. It's the only means of transportation is motorcycles. And so if you say you are banning the motorcycles, I don't know how you are going to do What alternative are you going to provide? You are alienating the government itself from people now. And so, in fact, they will even team up with the bandits. You And you don't want to do that. You want people to be sympathetic with you. What the bandits are trying to do or the terrorists are doing is to control the population. And if they are going to control it by making life easier for them than you, the government, then they will go ahead and, and team up with them. So we need to look at these policies. Well, what are the intended, unintended consequences of policies? It's not just because they are there. They are very good laid out. In fact, they are the best, but they have... And I have to pause you. Let's pause you in the meantime uh, and uh, come back to the studios and uh, take on the other two guests whom we earlier introduced, uh, Osman Boba Goza, who is president of the uh, Tricycle and uh, Okada Riders Association and owners. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to go there. Yes, we sir. had you on Good Morning Nigeria. It must have been sometime last year, I believe. Very well, sir. Or the year before. Very well, uh, very well, very well. And a day it had to do with the menace of uh, Okada riders yes. and the plan uh, to properly regulate them. I recall you were sitting around the same place where you were sitting very, 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 very. Now, the National Security Council is taking this up uh, at the highest level with the threat of saying, look, uh, let's ban. Uh, or probably we'll consider a ban. General Temlong already mentioned one of the challenges that that will uh, impose. Now, I know that part of your explanation at the time was that these registered, these uh, registered uh, tricycles and Okadas, they are not our members. Yes. But uh, what, what we see are Okadas everywhere. Yes. Uh, and what we see are also tricycles everywhere. Yes. And they have been implicated in criminal activities. In urban areas and amongst kidnappers and, and, and bandits and terrorists. Let us just understand what is happening. Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. Uh, as you saw last year, I'm here and we have discussed a lot. But before I say something, I want Nigerians to understand that. There's a two type of using of motorcycles. 
One is that they are thinking that everybody riding motorcycle is an Okada. It's not like that. We have the motorcycles using by, uh, I can say, uh, individuals. And we have the ones that our members are operating that we call commercial. The people that are riding private are different. We don't have any business with them. It's just ones that are riding commercials. Those are our members. And as I said last year that I'm here, that we have been taking some measures, which by grace of God, we have already taken a, a step whereby we wanted to see that we caution the insecurities in Nigeria, because as far as I mentioned, Okada, Okada, Okada. Two, data gathering. We have started doing the data, data gathering of all the members of the commercials, which to show the world that, uh, to show the Nigerian people that we identify our members with the uh, privates, which we are now uh, doing a, 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 QRQ, a QR code for an ID card. So that if an Okada man that is operating, you will check him as he mentioned say about using an ID card. We are planning this thing to make sure that all our members in Nigeria have that QR code. And before we operate, we have been planned that all the members will wear a reflective jacket with coded numbers in each area that you are going to operate in this country. And now we have we have set up a national Secretariat very recently in Guarampa Estate here, where we have the many facilities to handle this situation. But the issue of uh, planning to ban the motorcycles and all uh, uh, tricycles, all, all, all motorcycles, I want the federal government to understand that this is an association have a members, millions of people, millions. If I say millions, not one million, not two million, not even ten million. Millions of people registered members with this association. But I, I know exaggerating. I mean, let's be realistic. How many motorcycles do we have in the country? So well, just give us a realistic number so that we know the number of persons who probably we are dealing with. We are over 40 million. 40 million. 14, 14. 14. Very well. Are they owners or riders? No, riders only. Registered uh, because... Are they Nigerians? All Nigerians? They are Nigerians. Oh, Nigeria. Yeah, Nigeria. The people that are operating, as you see in the motorcycle, if you wanted to count them, they are more than 20 million. But to register to one with us, as I say, that we have taken a step over 14 million as of now. Then now, if you say you are planning to ban, we are trying to make sure that to see that insecurity have been tackled in Nigeria. And out of this 40 million, just take 1%. Only 1% will give you 140,000. If you say you are banning people, 140,000 uh, 140, on their uh, getting their daily bread, how will you see? Are you increasing the crime or you are reducing? Just only 1%. Just only 1%. And I want us to know that the, most of the, uh, this are recycled, hmm? have been, the uh, Okada has become a main uh, constituency uh, empowerment. By the lawmakers to assist and employment, and this employment will even uh, worsen the crime. So what I'm trying to say here is that those 40 million that I mentioned, not only 40 million, they have a dependable. Why? Well, but if they came out and found something to take it to them, then if you say you ban them, is there no alternative for them? No. And today, if you wanted to go and ride motorcycle, once they see you, you pass with motorcycle, they say, ah, this one is Okada. This one is... This. <laughs> we have already given directive to all state chairmen that they should now tell a former member, no member is allowed to carry even two passengers. You are allowed to only carry one passenger. Look, those ones that they say, they say, carry three, three people, I carry four, four people. <laughs> they are not our members. I'm just curious yes. uh, about, I know that sometimes, I mean, we, 
in Nigeria. Yes. We have a tendency uh, to exaggerate. I'm just curious, when you say that you have about 14 million members, yes. it, it, probably it is so. What are the criteria for membership of your association? I, 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 criteria, let, let, let's break it up. How do you become a member of Okada uh, Rider? I just come to you and I'm a member. Thank you very much. Once before you call, you know, you are not coming to the National Secretariat. You must go to the unit where you're supposed to operate. When you go to that unit, you will meet the leadership of that unit. And if you ask them that, okay, I wanted to buy a motorcycle and I wanted to operate under this unit. The unit executive will ask you, there's a form which they're supposed to give you to fill. And that form carry all your data. From where do you come? Which local government? Uh, here in Abuja, which area that you wanted to operate? And where are you living? And after this, you must bring a guarantor whereby he can stand for you that, yes, I know such a person, whether it's my brother or it's my son, and I want him to do this business. So I will stand for him. Then they will give you a form to fill it. Then when you fill it, then they will now give you a number, which I mentioned it here that we have we started the, doing the ID cards, that when they give you that ID card, in anywhere, anywhere, maybe you have an accident or something, they will just pick that ID card. And if they pick that ID card, once they have already snapped it, they will show all your data and they will know where you came from and where you are living. Okay. So, and uh, before you operate, they will now agree that okay you are going to use a black jacket and they will give you the rules and regulation don't carry this don't do this don't work overnight don't do all this one we have it and we have been yeah. then it is the units that will now gather the data of all the members operating within their unit then they will now submit it the data they will share it to their branch from branch to local government from local government to zone from zone to state from state to national government uh, of of your people because anyway because of the the, the strata of uh, you know uh, headship uh, now just before i asked uh, i ask uh, uh, the, the the head of the miners uh, question is there any government department that is providing uh, the tricycles and motorcycles in nigeria no no supervising we are on our, we are more yeah, like you're just on, on your own very well we have been complaining complaining that we deserve a ministry Based on our population, we deserve it. Ministry, do you suggest uh, you should belong to transport or something? Yes, exactly. Okay, that's another matter. Exactly. Sorry, no, 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 okay. it's, not, it's not another matter. Are you saying that you are a parallel government? Very well. <laughs> we are on our way. <laughs> that's what I said earlier. That's what you did. Oh, oh, yeah, but you said with the That is it's what right. is happening in the country. There are other associations like that existing without having, uh, you know, uh, uh, you link do that with, with, with any ministry. ministry with the CAC. CAC was give you a certificate authorizing you to operate. To, to function, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, okay. but what you said, there's no oversight of... Uh, yes, that's, that's the point. That, mm -hmm. There's, no, there's oversight. no oversight. Now, and then there, you have commissioners of transport. Uh, oh, of course. Sani Shehu, former president of uh, Miners Association of Nigeria, the government is uh, focusing its uh, satellite now on the mining sector the, uh, because of the horrendous uh, kind of stories uh, that emanating from from that sector with respect to uh, deterioration of uh, security in nigeria do you buy the idea you know that that mining should be suspended for now in the case of mining the government says it should be suspended for a while or something mm -hmm. you know before uh, you could return to to business do you see that as, as an effective uh, policy if it comes to to, to be um, thank you very much, and uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I think it's not a good option. Uh, for once, at a point in time, mining activities were suspended in Zampara, and the result was not good. In fact, that seems to have even increased the, you know, uh, the level of uh, terrorism and uh, banditry in Zampara State. Second, the Mineral of attraction to the bandit is gold. Gold is one out of uh, hundreds of uh, minerals that are being mined in the country. Industrial mineral, which are usually bulk, uh, is certainly not attractive to the bandit. You mine it in trailers, 
And that has been the source of raw material to our local industries. The Dangotes, the Boas, all these cement uh, manufacturing emanate from mining activities. And there are other uh, minerals that are, are being exported uh, for, for Paris. The Tantalite, the Tin, Columbite, all these are non attractive mineral you know, to the bandit. So I, uh, I hope the inclusion of uh, 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 mining in the bomb is an error, which I hope will soon be corrected. Because there are no country in the world that can just place a blanket ban on mining activities. It has never happened. Countries become innovative in the face of security challenges. Central Africa, for instance, had to sort a private security outfit for Russia. And now the country is stabilized and money activity is on. In Ghana, the private uh, mining company cooperated with the government, sometimes in the, in the area of funding, to assist them to secure their mines. So, it is not, in fact, it is dangerous to make this statement because every country is now trying to woo foreign investors. Remember, in Nigeria, our debt services is almost equal to our budget. So we need forests as, 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 as desperate as possible. Yes, we, we need it. Sani uh, uh, let me yes. just ask you this. Is yeah. there any nexus between mining in Nigeria, built in Zamfara or elsewhere, and the uh, and the uh, and banditry. I ask this question because if there was a reason why the federal government stopped mining in Zampara for a while, does it mean that the operators or the miners have a certain kind of a relationship with the bandit? Is, is it for, for protection or, or something? Because what was said yesterday was that uh, there is this issue of uh, uh, supplying uh, bandits with uh, some logistics in terms of financing and, and, and what have you. Is there any nexus at all between these two bandits and uh, miners in the first place? Okay, the, the relationship is this. The bandit, it, 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 the miners are also victims of the bandits because miners, in fact, including myself, we are licensed miners, but the bandit also <coughs> operate in our own place. You understand? Drop away of our workers. Some some of our workers have been killed. So we are, in terms of who is the victim, we are, apart from those who lost their life, you know, and being kidnapped, miners are the third category of victims. So during the ban, the illegal mining continued, while the legal miners, since they, they are known, they can be identified with you. So what I'm saying is, the ban, the, the ban did not achieve the purpose for which it was placed. Do miners, do, 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 do miners pacify bandits? For them to be attacked or something. Is that, that's why we're no, 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 no. That can't, it's not, it's not, it's not. That's like some place. communities are doing. They will go and pay some uh, ransom, collective ransom, so to speak, you know, to ensure that they demand the protection, pro protection fee. fee. Exactly. exactly. Do miners pay protection fee to the bandit? No, we don't. But so why the linkage? That's the, that's okay. the, right. the linkage yeah. is limited. Excuse me. Uh, no, sorry. That is not linkage. I'll allow you, Sonny. Yes. The part of the question that Kirion is asking. Yeah. Let me amplify that question okay. so you take it along. Yeah. There has been a documentary mm. indicating the search for so-called dirty gold. Mm. If you remember, in Sierra Leone and in Liberia, yeah. there were blood diamonds. Mm. Now, from Mali and elsewhere around the Sahel, mm. including Nigeria, mm. it is said that there is a huge search mm. for dirty gold. Mm. And that the backers of this adventure, this criminal adventure, are supplying weapons to some of the miners, whether they are artisanal or otherwise, and other criminal gang elements mm. to ensure that they mine this gold, place it, it's very, it's very, it's very easy uh, to convey, and then take it uh, to where uh, Dubai is a favorite location for this gold. Mm. What is your comment on that with regard to what Kerry had also said in terms of bandits operating uh, in our environment, I was unchallenged. Well, my comment is I'm not aware of all this development. What I'm aware of 
we are victim of banditry because they chase us from our site and here we are jobless that's the truth but you don't overrule possibilities exactly things are possible in nigeria you can overrule but i don't know about it i don't know okay. well, i don't know uh kabir I, I i'm sure perhaps you, you must have picked this up uh in terms of uh, I don't know, anybody knows about the gold soak if you're familiar with with dubai uh, but dubai is said to be a major recipient of of this dirty gold that is being harvested from the sahel in uh, in west africa of which nigeria is inclusive now is this part of of the avenues for one proliferation of small arms and light weapons two for protection of racketeering and three uh, bandits who could also just stray and then get into a kidnapping in order to supplement their incomes because sometimes they may not get if you may proper value uh, for their criminal activities in terms of uh, seeking to harvest uh, dirty gold yeah, definitely and um, I mean, I can align with uh, Alaji Shehuthani. Um, what is happening is um, at, the le at the level he operates, he's an operator. So the global ramification of some of these things may not be obvious to him. Um, the documentary you mentioned has been um, researched quite extensively. And I've seen critics that have attempted to look into the documentary and pick holes on it. But frankly, no one has that today has questioned the veracity of that, the conclusion of that documentary. There, there is dirty gold. There is an international um, criminal group that is involved in both the supply of weapons as well as benefiting from the proceeds of, of that activity. Now, it may be obvious to the operator uh, and in certain instances, it may not be obvious. All the operators see is bandits affecting him. Where the bandits get their weapon? Who is dictating the activities? Um, he, they, they don't. They don't know. Um, but one thing I think that is obvious, and it ties into the earlier statement by retired General Tangulong, as well as this, this statement by Elijah Shewisani, is the weak governance structures that exist within the country. We've been, we were warned, if I remember a year ago, two years ago, ECOWAS released a report on the financing of terrorism, and they mentioned this aspect. So as a country, when we have um, this type of information available to us, what regulatory steps have we taken to reduce the consequence of these activities? Frankly, not, not so much. I, if we take the action of banning the activity, are we going to stop them from moving to another sector? No. Even if we, for instance, we stop them from moving to another sector, what, what cap capability do we have of um, manning our borders to prevent um, both the proliferation of small arms and, and light weapons, as well as the um, you know, sale of this, uh, of this gold? Um, all you need to do, I mean, I, I operate in the, in the civil space. I, I run a consultancy. And believe me, in Abuja here, there is a market for, for Zambara gold. And I'm sure he will attest to that. All you need to do is speak, speak to one or two persons. And why is this market existing? Some of the high-profile hotels in Abuja. The people come there, take rooms, and that's where they, 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 trade. they trade. So it's not hidden. And it goes back to my earlier statement and the statement by General Techno. The regulatory agencies that are supposed to put an eye on these things, where are they? I'm, I'm talking of probably the most high profile hotel in, in Abuja. I, I have, as, as you know, um, a, a private player uh, been involved in terms of advising persons who came from as far as Guinea to come and treat in, 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 in that, that type of activity. Um, so, again, where are the regulatory bodies? Uh, are you sure the regulatory body is not uh, compromised? Because that, that's what we get, you know, in some of these uh, regulatory agencies, not just in Nigeria, perhaps, but, you know, elsewhere. Um, let's re return to uh, General Temlon once more. Um, so, insecurity in Nigeria, of course, has also been likened to underlying religious undertone, rising cases of religious extremism and the battle for superiority and what have you. And uh, no day has passed you know, without reports of kidnapping, banditry, robbery, murder, retrackling, and all manner of uh, criminality. And more worrying, sir, is the fact that uh, government has expended humongous amount of money in the defense sector yet we hear that after the attack of kujo prison that some officials are saying that uh, the firepower 
of the terrorists of course uh, is much 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 beyond what um, our men had and that's why they didn't respond in the first place we were growing up you know when you hear the sound of gun i mean you're able to know the world is automatic you know because of the way it is released you know some of them can even do, give you some rhythm you know some some, some Stac staccato sauce exactly exactly and and if you if you now check the, the weapon of the person attacking you and you know what you have and for you to respond is to, of course, expose yourself, you know, to, 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 to ridicule. So what is happening uh, with the equipping of the Nigerian military? Because of course we've had so many, uh, you know, equipment in terms of uh, plane, helicopter, uh, tanks, and, and, and what have you. What, in your opinion, should be done, perhaps to, to ramp up, uh, you know, that area for the military? Thank you very much, Kirian. I, I think what we have to look at in the Kuje thing is what happened was a raid. Uh, and a raid is usually done by a force that is inferior, raiding a, a superior force using uh, stealth, uh, infiltrating into the area, and using surprise to achieve its objectives. And that's what they did. And uh, they had quite uh, a, a bit of intelligence. In fact, not just a bit, a lot of intelligence about the situation in Kuje area. And that's what we we're talking about, the regulatory or the weak governance structures. And then, because people come in with machines, uh, are registered, because the Okada man said they register them. But I said, now, how do you know who is registered or not? They come with machines as Okada people, pick people to Kuje prison, they have a survey, do a reconnaissance of the whole place and came back would know that look these are the disposition of the troops these are the number of security personnel here and there and you know even our prisons itself with uh, the correctional services the people there are so free you go there it's like market people are talking people have telephones people have uh, in fact there is trade of uh, illicit drugs going on and the rest uh that will be another talk for another day but i think the important thing was that uh there was communication uh that was a completely breach and so these people were able to mass and concentrate force using motorcycles and this is why the government is concerned about motorcycles because you can move into gogolada area there and remain and say you're okada it happened here in joss when people will say you stop somebody at tamaras and tell him to take you to hill station he didn't know where his station was these are people who were infiltrated to start the 2008 crisis in Josh. So it's, it's, it's quite uh, this in that. Unfortunately, the Okada man said they are a government of their own, parallel. I think that's what the federal government must look at, the state governments must look at, the local governments must look at. Because if you have people up to 14 or 20 million, as he says, as he claims, and uh, they are operating a business that is not regulated by anybody but is self-regulatory, then there is a serious security danger there. I saw the demonstration they did in Lagos when there was a plan to ban them from entering the district. And honestly, I do the attention of the military high command. I say this is a very serious security problem that must be looked at. And uh, the, the important thing is that you don't know who is an Okada rider, it's self-regulatory. It's only when you go that the union or somebody comes in. So these people were able to infiltrate using Okada and come and did a raid. Now, in terms of equipping the military, uh, uh, Kirian, and uh, you know that uh, the cost of military equipment are very high. Most of them, some of the ones you need are not all, are not off the shelf. Yes, these people are able to concentrate power at a local place and achieve superiority when they want to do it. Uh, they use uh, uh, anti-aircraft weapons at times, which has a very long range. And, uh, and so it brings us to see this 800 million that you are asking questions during a municipal review. Who gets those 800 million? Do they spend it in the bush? Okay. There is a nexus between mining and all these ones. We have, it, it's, there is no, it's clear. If the man has said he didn't know about it, there's a nexus. Right now, around Bashar area in Wasi, where Kaolin is marsh, there is serious crisis there. In fact, I think yesterday the Bashar, Bashar market couldn't hold because they are mining Kaolin there and copper. 
Now, the same thing in the goal areas of Zamfara, Niger, and the rest. So, it started even in the Congo. In the 60s, what happened? Why was Patrice Lumumba killed? Why has Congo not uh, enjoyed stability? What happened in Liberia and Sierra Leone? You, you have said it uh, uh, yourself here. So, there's a nexus. So, I mean, even when you say you are equipping the military, one, one to look at the cost of the Tucanos. And then when you say you are putting this amount of money, there, is, there are competing demands where people will start shouting that they are spending too much money on the military. But in fact, we are not. Because what the military need now, apart from the massive numbers that you need to add to have boosts on ground, you need technology. And these things are, are expensive. To get a drone that can attack and the rest is in millions of dollars. And which can stay up. And that's what you are needed around that Kujia area. Even in Abuja itself, you need to have eyes from the sky 24 hours. That's what you need. And if you are going to put an aircraft, it means you are going to be burning foil. But then you need, you need drones. And then drones that can attack. Drones that can can inform people and then you have a standby a mobile heart hitting standby force that we're going to hit when this sort of things is but i read the reading party coming on motorcycles to come and raid a kujay prison and by the way why should you keep all those number of high profile criminals in kujay for goodness sake you have about how many prisons in nigeria that you cannot uh, this thing even if they are savage jail time why do you have to put all of them they are communicating with themselves. They compromise the correctional service people. They talk to themselves. They get telephones. They talk. They have so much money. These bodies that they take ransom, they come and, and, and you know, they, they have so much money. So, I mean, in the first place, the decision to have concentrated those numbers in Kujia prison is wrong. And if you have them anywhere, I think it's time to disperse them all over the place. You don't have to, you don't have to do that one because... They will continue to raid the prisons. The jailbreak in Josia. There were insiders. Unfortunately, the reports are never published out. And there is, like we said, no sanctions. Because if there are sanctions, like what the military did, a lieutenant colonel was dismissed and the rest. Let's hear. Okay, uh, General Tom Long, uh, thank you very much. Again, we are having to cut in so that we can take a short break. Just before we do, gentlemen, I'm a General Tom Long was talking about acquisition of, of uh, additional platforms that you have to have your eyes in the sky uh, to be able to superintend over certain locations. Okay, I, I just wonder, sometimes when you, you get to read reports and watch some of the videos, it's like you, you, are, you are in a movie, uh, a movie theater, uh, watching uh, high-profile operations, say, by the, by the United States. Uh, I mean, they... they, they where the victim nations can quarrel, they can uh, dispute the rationale for such actions. But uh, we saw what happened uh, a couple of years ago. And it is that these persons who were being picked out, uh, were, were being picked out, the Russians have done it, you know, that's, uh, so sometimes it's like you're you are in a movie. But uh, again, we'll, probably, we'll get there at some point. Well, the the, the, getting there cannot just happen because you and I are here presenting mm -hmm. and talking about it. It has to come with uh, some level of a uh, will and determination to do that in terms of the finance i would say that nigeria has such finance because one what does it take to perhaps uh, deploy satellite technology for instance to read locations no, right even what we have today which is still functional uh, that's a national nigerian communication satellite nice comes it has a it has a what they call c band that c band is for navigation you can navigate He's use, he can use, he can navigate. That's why when we were, we were beginning this program, we had the comment of uh, the retired uh, naval officer who was commending the Nigerian Navy for what the, all the good works that he's doing. Fine and good. But can we launch amphibious attack from any point, from any, any, any sea in Nigeria, any sea around Nigeria? Do we have the calculation? This is a question of deploying technology. And that is what... U.S. is doing. That's what Europe is doing. That's what everybody is doing. Like, what is good? Because, you know, uh, 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 criminality has also become scientific. All right. Uh, you're watching Good Morning Nigeria. All right. You're welcome back. And it's still Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We still have all our guests with us. One aspect that, gentlemen, I, I would like us also to uh, focus on, I want to bring in here. We've talked earlier about uh, 
uh, not just on this program, on, on governed spaces. And I know that you have expressed uh, views about uh, what we need to do in, with respect to government spaces. But this morning, Gerard Long has also raised a pertinent issue. And, and, and that is to say, in summary, that are we paying too much attention to politics and politicking rather than governance? Take our motor parks, for instance. And he says, yeah, why, why are we not having adequate routine and therefore regular surveillance at our motor parks? Admittedly, one or, or two of the escapees from the Kuje prisons, one was picked up at uh, Area 1 motor park, uh, and I think another one elsewhere at another motor park. But on a daily basis, people are just going, the one that was picked up at Area 1 because he had Indian hemp. Otherwise, he might just have slithered through. So, what can be done in, in terms of fairly easy locations to monitor? And these are local government responsibilities. But uh, let me probably prompt you by providing an answer. It turns out that wherever you are, in most locations around local governments, these parks and markets are seen as oil block equivalent compensation for political thugs and henchmen. So they're just going there collecting rates, everything is about money, 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 but as a critical adjunct to safety and security, nobody appears to be concerned. Um, you, you couldn't have done it any better. And I think uh, in, in a general sense, we need to realize that transportation and its system is a key component, not just of our national economy, but for our security strategy. In other words, the same way we look at that, certain other components of our economy as critical infrastructure, we need to look at transportation. Um, incidentally, I got a visitor yesterday, and um, he told me he came to, uh, he lives outside Abuja city. And he came to drop a visitor who was going back home. And I asked him where he said Area 1. So the first thing that occurred to me, so there is a park that services um, outside Abuja from Area 1. Because of course I know Jabi Park. Yes. And I know, I know another one, I think, near Karu. So he said, yes, there is another one. What am I trying to bring? There are parks that are not regulated. They just come together Informal. informally and then they service the, the public. And you cannot have that in a, a normal country where you have a critical infrastructure like transportation, moving between people moving between locations where you don't regulate the both the assets in terms of vehicles as well as the people that you know use that, that service. So I think um instead of looking at it from uh, this micro micro level, we should look at it from that higher level where we admit that in um, transportation is a key component of our security sector. But I, I want to go back a little bit to a statement earlier made by General Tenglong regarding surveillance. And I know you also mentioned it in your remarks before we went on break. And I thought um, it's very important that we mention the role that the Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy that is headed by Pantami can play in this regard. At, at this stage, I am forced to ask, do we realize that that ministry can actually contribute to our security? Virtually everything we've spoken about here, that ministry can, can do for us. And and if I were, if I had any level of authority, it's just to send a task in order from the presidency to that ministry to provide solutions. Surveillance, any country that wants to improve its security must have eyes and ears in the air. Today we talk about um, helicopters that move around. Bauchi state governor was uh, issued a public statement where he said helicopters have been sighted within Bauchi territory that are unknown to him as, as, as a governor. And we have the same thing in all other locations. Now that is a major weakness that we need to block. We have to have eyes in our skies. Know every bird, whether um, mechanical or or, 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 or or human or whatever animal that moves, so that we know where that bird is going to, what is bringing and what is dropping. That ministry, as well as Ministry of Science and Technology, which I think um, Nikon site is under, can play that role. Ministry of Defense, in today's world, there is geospatial technology that allows you to notice heat, heat component. If you are in a forest and there is heat, your special technology can tell you exactly what that is. No, can be, there was a, uh, I'm so clear, you remember this, probably about a year or two ago, there was a certain gentleman uh, around Shagamo or elsewhere in Ogun State who said that he had designed a drone that uh, could, uh, that has sensors for detecting heat. So that it is not just the uh, visuals that you can see, but that if, if there's a human uh, congregation, 
the, this the drone it, it could have show. sponsors that so, that could pick I mean, it up because but, we're in a public platform. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to speak to you know that's openly. Right, yeah. But my point is that ministry, in conjunction with the Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Science and Technology, can give us solutions to especially this surveillance component that we're, we're talking about. So when I'm hoping that the National Security Council is meeting, I'm hoping that they admit that ministry. If in the past we d we didn't see a role for that ministry in security in today's world, not just in terms of this hardware that we're talking mm -hmm. about, the cyberspace. A lot of what happens when terrorists mobilize, they mobilize in the cyberspace, whether in the main uh, open web or even in the dark web. So that ministry, and I want, I, I don't know how to emphasize this point. Uh, uh, we need to bring that ministry on board in, in security. Um, currently, and I'm, I must say this, and I hope you, you don't mind, the, the lack of harmony and synergy within our security agencies is not allowing that ministry to play its role. I leave so we need to address I, I will help you here. I leave the ministries, right? Because when last contract was launched, I was privileged to be in China. We launched the first one that had battery issues that was deorbited. Yeah. Then the second one came. I was also in China when it was launched. And this one was so much, in fact, it was so loaded that China was challenged as to say, look, the one we launched, you know, gave way after 15 months. You know, and then we are relaunching. That was, that's why they call it the uh, 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 national, national contract I, 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 uh, that is the relaunch. Right. It was highly loaded with transponders and bands. That even the, what you call the surveillance band is, is there. And again, even the American authorities were even questioning China as to why they should give yeah, Nigeria well. such a band. And have we yet to have the band? We're not deploying the band. The, 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 and the, 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 the politics probably just got in the way. In the way. And at some point, you heard uh, uh, potential consumers complaining that, oh, it doesn't have redundancy. Oh, we cannot use it. Oh, we cannot. Okay, remember that. that you exactly. Heard. And you moved the National Commissariat to a communication ministry as against Minister of Science and Technology, which provides the launch of that satellite. What I'm trying to say here is that it could have been more effectively utilized mm -hmm. if it was under the Minister of Science and Technology, all things being equal. I will be present to what we have in, uh, on our hand in this country. If we do not apply technology, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. are getting no mm -hmm. way about it. There are no two ways about it. It's not even negotiable. This is not even negotiable. The drone you're talking about, there are new individuals made the drone. Fine and good. But, Nigeria, they, they, they have uh, drones. And the point, the point is that the what, police, uh, what, what uh, level drones. of sophistication do we have in that drone? What kind of and, and usage? The, the police told us they bought, but frankly, I, I'm not. Do we have anybody manning the Nigeria airspace? Is there anybody manning? Will you know when? You know, well, that's, I, that, not that's, that's the function of, of, of uh, you know? That's the function of, of the air force. But I mean, let's throw this in. I'm we're not, we're in not, a, not seeking. We're not seeking. Yeah, yeah. We're not. Maybe Jonathan Law can take this along. We're not seeking to uh, uh, undermine or downplay the efforts that have gone into some national activities. At the Osho election and the Kitty election, we were hearing about platforms being deployed. They said three or so helicopters were in the, in the uh, three helicopters, thirty something thousand policemen, uh, soldiers, uh, DSS, uh, civil defense, road safety. For election, so after the election, everybody and go. just one state anyway. <laughs> well, I think, you know, okay, uh, someone please, uh, you can come in here in what will appear to be your, you know, uh, your uh, final thoughts, you know, on on, the, on this program. We have already been, we've been talking really, and I'm sure you're going to pick a point from uh, what we have raised, you know, to see how you can come in here. And technology is is, is high on the on, on on the list of what we have read this morning how can technology be deployed by the military or uh, the uh, the uh, nigerian armed forces uh, to fight uh, insecurity uh thank you very much Korean. uh technology is a force multiplier uh which means that uh what uh, technology can do for you uh, probably you need more men to do the same thing and the rich uh that's why we call it the force multiplier uh definitely we need to use technology uh Kabiru has really brought out the issue of the ministry of communications and i think the national security advisor has to come in strongly in here too to look at how he can coordinate the efforts of the ministry of communications science and technology to see how uh the technology either if it's local or homegrown or the ones we import can be incorporated into our national defense uh, efforts. Uh, we further need to see too that there is a coordination between the services. 
with the drones that the police are buying are they surveillance drones and if they are surveillance drones uh, how do they report uh, is there a fusion center that uh, the surveillance drones will report to where either the air force or the military or the army can react or the navy can react respond immediately to any threat and the rest so i mean that there should be that coordination so i see the national security advisor coming in here to to look at that i see the ministry of defense taking a commanding lead in in doing what we need uh to get us there and i think the the arm the ministry of defense and armed forces response committee did recommend that the use of technology and how it should be used and i believe that the minister of defense uh, should be able to start implementing that report as quickly as possible so as for us to be able to uh, key into what is the what what is available already we are not reinventing the wheel the wheel has been invented by others all we are doing is to adapt the wheel to our own local conditions and uh, some of this technology are something that can be done here I uh, saw so the what Jelani was showing about uh, Nigerian made electric cars. If we can make electric cars here, there are Nigerians who can build drones and the rest here and put eyes for them on it. And uh, like we said, we are underutilizing our NICOMSAT. I think we need to see what we can do with NICOMSAT. Uh, it's like, again, it's an issue of putting uh, round pegs and round holes or square pegs and square holes. Uh, we should stop the police uh, we should deploy the size uh, uh appointments into some of these areas and see what we can do for the survival of this country we must ramp up our national resilience of uh, effort and shift away from politicking into governance the poor problem is governance issues weak governance and absence of governance uh is always rhetorics now when it's time for elections people come in with very sweet talks but why do they implement them is not even there. So I, I want to thank you for this opportunity, uh, Kingsley and Kirian. And I believe that Nigeria will be able to benefit a lot from the deployment of technology, uh, train the hands on it, uh, make sure that they are able to, to implement it because there is one thing, you can deploy the technology and if the operators are not there to adequately use them as the way they are supposed to be used, you will not get the benefits from it. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. All right, uh, General uh, Tenlong, we also would like to appreciate you for being our guests on Good Morning Nigeria today. Always a delight uh, for your incisive and candid uh, comments on how we can better secure ourselves and our country. General Tenlong joined us from our Just Network Center. Now back to the studios here in Abuja. Very briefly, uh, sorry, we just took only a few comments from you, but I believe that we could always have the opportunity of getting you back on Good Morning Nigeria to discuss these relevant issues. Mm -hmm. uh, let's begin uh, first with uh, Alaji Sani uh, Shehu. Very briefly, then we'll get in uh, Alaji Goza as well. Yeah. Uh, I think part of why we are here is to offer uh, an innovative solution. We have been discussing solutions but let's have new solution that might be different from what has been there. And what I have in mind is the possibility of uh, constituting a kind of security endowment fund, which will be co uh, managed by the private sector. Because what I notice is, is that a national security fund? National security fund, which should be co managed by the government and the private sector. Because if government handles security the way that they, norm they handle their normal things, I don't know when the security yeah. issue will, will, will we'll, resolve. We'll, we'll In 1951, China had this kind of experience. What they used was technology. They googled the place and smoothed the place with, I think, 22 hours or so. They evacuated all the, 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 the dangerous guys. And that was all. So I think we should think of something new, not, and we should be proactive. What we have been seeing is yeah. they will attack. The government will be at the defense. I mean, they uh, will well, be reactive. Okay, okay. So, okay. Uh, what of time? Uh, 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 Alaji, just a uh, uh, few seconds, few seconds, right? right. You know, okay. uh, on the issue of uh, tricycles yes. and uh, uh, a motorcycle. Yes. Uh, what can better be done? Yes. As I said, uh, you know, both tricycle and motorcycles, we, we control them, and. Uh, Concerning the insecurity issues, we are ready. 
to work with the government. But you know that some of your men, some of your men are directly involved in some insecurity. Yes, in state. That challenge will be tackled. Our bands, our bands, they don't operate beyond nine o'clock in the, the evening, basically because of uh, what they've been doing. Yes, we know that. Like Kano, they say ten o'clock. Mm -hmm. In Abuja, there are some restricted areas that are not are not allowed to operate, mm -hmm. which our members are abide by it. Okay. So okay. now, as I say, that we are ready to work with the government hand in hand on skill too, so that uh, uh, and that cannot be. Saying that we are on parallel you, you, you know, what, you know what, I like to go that we will return to this subject matter yes. and explore the uh, uh, the angles in, in much more deeply. Well, thank you for being our guest this morning. You are President National Commercial Motorcycle and Tricycle Owners and Association of Nigeria. Yes. Shani Shio, former President Miners Association of Nigeria. Thank you very much for being our guest. My pleasure. Always a delight having Dr. Kabira Damon, the security risk management expert. Thanks a lot for being uh, on Good Morning Nigeria today. Thank you. Thank Let's you. go back now to our sports desk. Oh, we understand that we cannot take sports, but some big story coming out of Oregon at the World Athletics uh, uh, Championships. I'm sure that uh, in subsequent bulletins. Yeah, 